Hi, welcome back to Tig's Creations. This episode is entitled A Tribute to Marcelo Bielsa. As some of you may know, uh, Bielsa was sacked as the Leeds manager a couple of days ago, but in all honesty, he brought more respect and compassion and enjoyment of the game of football uh, back to Leeds United, back to the city of Leeds, and back to the footballing public in general than I think has been shown by a manager in a good long time. Um, certainly it is true to say that along with Don Revy, Marcelo Bielsa has had more influence on Leeds United and the city in Leeds um, than maybe any other uh, two managers in their history. Um, so I've enjoyed having the chance to watch Leeds back in the Premiership after 16 years in the wilderness in the second tier was absolutely horrible for a club and a city the size of Leeds. So thank you Marcelo Bielsa and this is my tribute to you. What I wanted to do was make a memento for myself for Marcelo Bielsa's time in Leeds and also maybe something that other people might be interested in. So the idea was to do uh, a craft design in wood with an epoxy inlay um, of an image of Marcelo Bielsa in his time at Leeds. Um, and I think it worked out pretty good. I hope you agree. First thing to do in this process is to get a picture of Bielsa into a software program that you can edit the image pretty well. Um, I found this Print 3D online which is free and is really good. You import the image into Print 3D and then what it allows you to do is click on this magic marker. Then you can um, trim down the image to uh, only contain the things that you're interested in and if you click the next button it takes you through to a system where what it's done is it's automatically deleted areas of the picture um, that it thinks you weren't interested in and you have these two options on the right hand side there and either add which I'm using now where you just trace a line through the parts of the image that you want and in the arrays where you can actually take out as I did at the very beginning there, things that it seemed to think um, were included with the um, facial image of Marcelo there. So now what I'm doing is just adding in the rest of his um, tracksuit top here. Uh, I'm probably not going to use this in the final image, but um, best to have everything you want. So now just use that erase, trace that bit on the right hand side. And now you've got an image close to what you want to use. The program will take out all of the background and just leave Marcelo on the front. What I realized was that some of his glasses had been um, omitted in the um, marker system. So I just added them back in again. And as far as I can tell, it just use a, uses a contiguous frame algorithm to look at the pixels and um, check in with the areas around and include those in the final image. You then press done and you move on to the next stage. The next thing you want to do is save all the changes you made. I know it doesn't look like it's going to save them because the background still looks pretty similar but when you do copy and then go up and make a, a new file you have to save your old one just to Change, uh, save all your changes and uh, you save that and give it whatever particular name you want and then move on open up a new paint 3d profile and then just do a paste and when the paste comes in what you can see is is that it's removed all of that background that you didn't want um, you can now save this image one of the nice things about Paint 3D is, is that when you go in and you save image, 
it gives the option of checking this um, background transparency if you click that what it re does is remove all of that so that the only thing that's left for you to save now is the particular part of the image that you were interested in so you give that a particular name and save it and move on to the next step the next thing I did for this project was to import the file into Microsoft um, Photos application. I'm not sure that this is absolutely necessary uh, to get the end result that I got, but the one thing it does allow you to do is go into its own editing software. Uh, it brings your image up and then you can click on the filter button and down on the right hand side what you'll see is one of the options for the filter is black and white high definition so I chose that and then decided to save that as the image that I was going to use to then um, start the um, Vectric VCarve cutting process so you just give it get another name and move on the next step in this project was to open up the software that I used to create the design and output the code for driving the CNC machine for this project. Here I'm using uh, VCar Desktop Pro. It's an incredibly flexible program and allows you to input all sorts of information specific to various aspects. Here I'm just setting the height, width and thickness of the wood that I'm going to be carving. Uh, you say yes the final product that I want is going to be a circular plaque so here I'm just making um, an outline of a circle with the diameter specifications that I already know which is 15 inches and it automatically puts that in place around the center of the material now what I want to do is bring a copy of that outer circle in by one and a half inches to give me an idea of where I want to put some of the text that I'm going to put on this tribute to Marcello. So um, you click the outer line and then go and you click this um, other aspect of the program and you just put in the specifications here. I'm saying I want it to be inside the outer line by one and a half inches and it automatically brings that in. So that now gives me an outer and inner line which I can now use to position text. Um, first thing I'll do though is I'll bring in the image of Marcelo that I made the um, edits of earlier in this uh, episode. And so now what you can do is you can click on that and scale that image to fit into that inner circle which is going to be um, the center of my image and the main part of my image. The nice thing about this program is, is that what you can do is you can click uh, um, an image edit system where you highlight the inner circle and then the picture of Marcelo itself and then go down and click this vector control system. What it does is it crops down the image so that only the area contained in that inner circle is shown and that's going to be my uh, final cutting image now I want to do is add in some text um, to do this what I want to do is put it around this inner circle so first what I want to do is crop this circle into an upper and lower semicircle and so that you do that with this node edit system you just click and cut the node points that you're interested in and now although it doesn't look at it, it's divided that full circle into an upper and lower semicircle. What you can do then is type in some text that you want um, say Marcelo Bielsa and you can get it to align along this upper circle as you'll see in a minute. So you type in Marcelo Bielsa, you put in the specifications of what you want, the text height, uh, the offset, um, the text font, which in this case is going to be Arial, and then, I mean, it's a really flexible program. 
uh, much more to go into here than I've got time for, but um, maybe I'll do a, a little more of a tutorial on this later. But here you go, so you just put in Marcelo Bielsa, that's highlighted, you equip that and then you highlight the um, semicircle that you're interested in putting that text around, so you highlight that and then the semicircle and then you go around to this text align button and you click that and an option comes up and there you go it starts putting the text around the line uh, or allow, around the vector that you choose uh, you then just put in a little offset and put that right in the middle of those two boundaries you do the same thing with the date and then uh, I wanted to add in LUFC so I just added that text in along the horizontal line. Now that you've made your design, the next step is to start telling the program how to communicate that information to the CNC machine. So here what you can see is I'm um, highlighting all of the text. I now go into the pathway design and this is a V-carve option. What this is going to do is use a specific bit that I have for the router that I'm using and it will carve out the letters that are in the text here. Uh, what you can do is you can click on to um, show the color that you're ultimately wanting to use, which in my case is black. Um, then you can just click show the design it shows the carve and then fills the carve in with the color that you've been choosing. You then go back into the 2D profile and now you highlight the image of Marcelo. Go back into the 3D and this time what we're going to use is the Vectric, Vectric Photo V-Carve. Um, this is a very specific aspect of the program where what it does, it'll etch into the surface of the wood the outline of the image that you have. Again, um, because I'm going to be using black, you choose black, and it shows you what the end outcome should look like. Now I'm just going to highlight the outer circle, use uh, another cutting part of the program, and sort of say I want to use a specific um, bit now to cut the outer edge of this. It's gonna say, Do you know you're gonna cut all the way through your wood? You say yes, and then it shows you what's gonna happen there. And so now you cut all the way through the wood and you end up with the template of your design. The next step is to save these cutting instructions into files in what's called a G code format, which you can import into another software to tell the CNC how to do the cutting. I'm using Gsender, which again, I think is a, a really nice program and very flexible. So you just find your G code file that you've saved, uh, import it into Gsender, and then you can see um, basically the idea of what you're gonna be cutting. Because I'm going to be using um, an acrylic paint and epoxy inlay system to highlight the design, the first thing to do was put a layer of shellac on the wood to prevent any seepage of the color of the paint uh, into those areas of the design that aren't going to be cut. So you then Make sure that the uh, wood is firmly affixed to the base of the router and begin the cutting process. The program centers the drill bit in the center of the piece and then starts the cutting. Once the cutting's finished, you end up something like this. You can clearly see the lettering and the text, but the image of Marcello is not so clear. That will come out once we've done the next process. You can see the image of Marcello uh, a little better in this orientation. It's going to look a lot better once I've given it a coat of black acrylic spray. 
This is what it looks like after the first coat of acrylic paint. There's going to be another coat put on, but I hope you can see that the image of Marcello is beginning to stand out more and more. This is what the plaque looks like after receiving two coats of uh, black spray and being allowed to dry overnight. Now I start to sand off the excess black paint, uh, initially using a 120 grit sandpaper. After a little bit more work with the 120 grit sandpaper and then switching over to 180 grit, you end up with something looking like this. For a first attempt at such a large photo VCAV project, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Having said that, I was going to do some epoxy resin inlay into the lettering and then do finishing coats of uh, an oil wax and, and uh, a polish. But as you can see, the paint, once it got into the lettering, there was still quite a lot of bleed through uh, into the surrounding wood. And so I need to work out a better way of masking, either masking off the lettering or doing um, a pre-sanding wood treatment and then the shellac to try and further limit the bleeding through into the surrounding wood. So that's almost the completion of my tribute to Marcello. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the um, plaque that I made. Uh, I can make these for anybody who might be interested. But the whole goal for me was to honestly say thank you Marcelo for your time and your industry during your time at Ellen Road. I'm going to do a little bit of polishing on the um, model with some modifications that I thought about while, while making this plaque and I'll maybe show a picture of that at the end of this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy the station. If you do, please like and subscribe and we will be back or I will be back with more information sometime soon. Take care, stay safe. So I decided I wanted to show you a, a slightly better end product. So I ran through the carve and the cut again and did some fills. Uh, this time I used a, a different um, sealing agent and I decided to do the lettering in epoxy rather than uh, with the paint um, but the rest is all the same and I hope you'll agree that it actually came out whoops, a lot better this time with uh, next to no bleed through into the wood. So there we are. I hope you enjoy this personal tribute to Marcelo Bielsa from me. Take care. Bye.